Welcome home. I'm so glad to see you again. I'm Jarrell. This is Mountain Home. And today I'm going to share some advice with you on purchasing an auto harp. So many people have reached out to me over the past month asking about the auto harp, if I can help them get started and uh, what sort of auto harp they should buy. So today I'll be sharing all of that stuff with you, but I want to make sure that uh, you keep in mind that I am just one person. I'm only one source of information on this topic. So the information that I share with you, um, don't take it as the gospel. Take it on board, consider it, think about it, and check for other sources. If you know other musicians online, if you have any other music shops locally, and you can meet face to face and uh, ask them about auto harps, and if you can check other sources online, other YouTube channels, and other auto harp players, see what they have to say, bring all that information together, and then you can decide for yourself uh, which information seems right to you. I'm going to share with you my personal experience and my advice on the matter. So first I'm going to just strum out a little tune um, just to get warmed up here and if you can tell what the song is then uh, please do comment it below I won't say what it is and after that I'll share some information I'll start with just the basic useful most useful information and at the end of the video or towards the end of the video I'll share just a little bit more technical information now let's see if you can tell uh, what this is There's just a little bit of that. So I think the most thing to, uh, the most important thing to consider when you're looking for an auto harp is the number of chords that are on there and the chords that are on there. So this is the uh, second auto harp that I added to my collection. It's a 21 chord Oscar Schmidt. So uh, many people have asked what chords are available on there. I'm going to bring this close to the camera, but I think the camera won't the camera's not auto-focusing today. It's a little bit annoying, so I'll go ahead and read that off to you. In terms of the major chords, we have um, E, uh, this is a B flat, F, C, G, D, A. In terms of the seventh chords, we have F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. And we have some other chords here. So we have minor chords, but this one comes equipped with A flat major and B flat seven. But I actually modified that. I've changed that to B minor because uh, no songs um, that I play use B flat seven. So I changed that to a B minor, C minor, G minor, D minor, A minor, and E minor. This gives us access to play in a wide range of keys. Once in a while, you'll come up against a song where you don't have the chord available. If it's something like F sharp minor seventh or something, you know. Um, and at that point, <clears throat> when you're playing music like that, you can either, if you're with other people, or even if you're by yourself, sometimes you can maybe just not play that chord <laughs> and you can just continue with the song. And oftentimes that's good enough. So even if a song, your, your song, you're playing a song that doesn't, that has a chord your auto harp doesn't have, that's fine. So 
I recommend, as my first piece of advice, is if you want to play the style that I'm playing where you are playing the chords of a song, you want to accompany yourself as you sing a song, if you are joining an ensemble with other musicians, if you're joining, say, someone's got a guitar and you want to uh, play along with a guitarist, absolutely get a 21 chord instrument. I cannot personally myself cannot think of a situation where you would want a 15 instead of a 21 chord instrument. When you are first learning, it is a bit easier to learn on a 15 chord auto harp because there's less that uh, you have to navigate, but you're going to cross that river very quickly and you'll be on the other side wondering, oh, is that all that I can play on the auto harp? So this is my Oscar Schmidt 21 chord instrument. The first auto harp that I acquired is this chroma harp, and this is a 15 chord instrument. And it's, I wonder if the, the lighting is okay there. No, it's, you can kind of see it a bit. There we go. So you can see the chords that are on there. I'll just hold that there for a second. But you have access to significantly less keys to play in because of the chords. For example, I, um, let's see, I don't, I think I may have modified this one to have B minor as well. Um, but in terms of the major chords, it's, uh, let's see, uh, they're scattered. The, the, the configuration on here is a bit more scattered as well. So in terms of the major chords, I have D major, uh, F major, uh, C major, and G. And that's about it. I don't even have, I don't have an A major. I don't have an E major. I have E flat, which I modified to um, E minor. I'm pretty sure that's an E minor now. Well, let's see. Yeah. So I modified that to E minor. Um, but on this one, I have uh, F7, A7, C7, G7, E7, D7. I have A minor. D minor, G minor, and of course I added that E minor there. So there is a B flat, which I use, I think some Roy Orbison songs use B flat and things like that. So I have to keep B flat on there. So there's significantly less songs that you will be able to play. So for my advice, my personal experience is absolutely get a 21 chord harp because you will be able to play way more music. Okay, I'll just play this one a bit and you can hear what this one sounds like. I have to remember where the chords are on this guy. <laughs> That's a bit, a little bit confusing for me because the chords are in totally different places and I don't really play this one anymore. I keep it around as a backup in case I need to go play a gig somewhere and something goes wrong with my other auto harp. Now the reason why I prefer the Oscar Schmidt over the Chroma harp has to do with the timbre and the voice of the instrument. So what I notice on the chroma harp is it has a thinner voice to it the timbre is is a bit um there's less depth and warmth to it it's a little brighter which is nice uh but in the style that i play in the music that i want to play and and what i'm playing i prefer the the more robust voice of the oscar schmidt so i'll i'll leave the reverb off and you can just hear the difference here
So it's just more full-bodied. It has a richer, deeper sound. And I'll play the chroma harp here. This one's brighter. Now they're both good. They're both do the job just fine. But what I find is the back of the chroma harp, if I make contact with that even a little bit, it gets muted significantly. What I find with the Oscar Schmidt is it's more resistant to um, that sort of, um, I, I suppose we would call it a, a, um, a tonal or timbral dampening. I can make more contact with ins this instrument and it doesn't really affect the tone as much as it does on the chroma harp. So me personally, I prefer the Oscar Schmitz, but it's best if you have the opportunity to find a music shop somewhere, if you can try that, that would be ideal for you to hear the difference yourself. Um, this thing, I, I just tuned it, but it's, it's the humidity has been so weird, it's a little bit out of tune at the moment. So most what's most important next uh, we will look at getting a modern auto harp so my second piece of advice which is going to be extremely important piece of advice is don't get an antique auto harp get a modern style auto harp now older uh, auto harps you'll find them for sale quite often especially on sites like ebay they may look all right in pictures but they are not designed to play in the vertical style. They're meant to sit flat. Now, what really caters to playing in the vertical style is the edges are rounded here, which means you can set that on your lap. As you can see, I need to have this at an angle in order to properly access um, all the different components of the instrument. And there is space here. This area here is where you are striking the instrument. Older style auto harps were not meant for you to strike there they were meant for you to strike there. So on an older instrument, you will find uh, space down there. But let's just see what it sounds like down there. You have a much harsher, stronger attack when you play down there. That's quite harsh down there. So uh, Mother Maybell Carter uh, really pioneered that style of playing it vertically. And when that became prominent, manufacturers changed the way that they built and designed auto harps they designed to take into account needing space. I personally would prefer more vertical space for these high strings because it gets uh, really close to that peg there. So let's just go ahead. Um, I've queued something up here. Let's go ahead and have a look. So we'll compare a few different auto harps and we'll see which ones are appropriate. So you can see these here on the, I'm a little, I'm taking up a lot of space on this, on this window, aren't I? Uh, you can see these modern styles here. This is a modern style. You can tell by the mechanism, the chord mechanism here. Uh, those are always going to be the modern style. Those come from Oscar Schmidt. You can see, I have to move. <laughs> you can see, and it's gone. Right, so you can see, uh, diagram A here. This is an older style auto harp. I would strongly advise against purchasing that style of auto harp. Again, we have the older style auto harp here where there is less space to play above the chord mechanism and there is space designed lower. You want to avoid those. Do not buy those. The reason being as well, not just practically in that they're not meant to be played vertically, but Oh, if I set my hand on the chair, it kind of looks like I'm, I'm resting on the auto harp there. Right, so, the reason being why I advise against... Oh, Brian Bowers, hello. Um, the reason being why I advise against purchasing an older auto harp is that older auto harps are going to have damage on them. These instruments are often um, stored in sheds or barns when people lose interest in them and so these things have been around for decades and when they have damage it's not worth it in terms of what you will pay 
in order to have the instrument repaired and have the strings replaced, it is not worth it. You can just buy a newer auto harp that is in very good condition for cheaper than what you can get an auto harp repaired for. So do not buy an older auto harp unless you really want an antique and you want a fixer upper and a project. So here's also a modern style as well. And there we go. So the next piece of advice is make sure that it has all the strings. This may sound like a funny piece of advice, but auto harp strings generally you'll have to buy them in sets. Uh, they're much less common and much harder to find than say guitar strings, banjo, mandolin strings. Those are common. Auto harp strings are quite rare. Let's go ahead and just hop on over to eBay and we'll have a look here. When you buy an auto harp, I would say if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can just buy pre-owned ones and often, often you'll find auto harps at excellent prices, $100, 150 200 I picked up my 21 chord Oscar Schmidt. I think I paid about $200 for this, maybe a bit less. It came with a whole roll of felt and an entire pack of new strings. So that was an excellent deal for me. Um, the B string broke on this. I was rocking out. I was adventuring around the States last year and traveling around and hanging out at saloons and up in campsites in the mountains just jamming and, and meeting other adventurers and making friends and playing music with, with people sitting around campfires. Uh, and a bit of that and my B string broke. Luckily, this when I purchased this came with a whole pack of other strings so I was able to put a new pack of strings on there. Wouldn't you know it, a couple, uh, two weeks ago, the B string broke again. Uh, and I didn't have another pack of um, auto harp strings, so I actually just put a guitar string on there. A <laughs> very similar gauge. And that worked out. That's fine, but you're not always going to be able to do that with all these strings. So, when you see these items on sale online, you may find some that say, oh, it's only missing one string, oh, it's only missing two strings you're going to be in a situation where maybe you'll have to buy an entire pack of strings and at that point you're paying 100 200 bucks for strings 150 so i would advise make sure you get uh an auto harp that has all of its strings this looks cool i wouldn't mind this this look look people are bidding on that this is this is a, a good one if i didn't have an, an auto harp already i would try to to win that now the shipping price is going to be high because i live in australia so Okay, what do we have? This one is fifty dollars. Oscar Schmidt. Oh, this is this is fantastic. Have a look at that. So let's go ahead and open that and see what it says. I would buy that honestly. Uh, so bidding bidding starts at fifty. That looks great. It looks like it has all of its strings on there. It looks like it's in good condition. So these are great. I would recommend going on eBay and looking at pre-owned auto harps there because you're going to find great prices. If you can. Often, if you can find them even for about a hundred bucks, that's fantastic. Um, you do not have to buy a brand new one necessarily, unless there is a very specific reason why you want a brand new one. Um, I think it's a good idea to uh, take instruments that maybe um, they're not being used by their owners anymore, maybe they've been passed on to family, and giving them a home where uh, they can bring music into people's lives. So, when you are purchasing pre owned auto harps, absolutely make sure you pay very close attention to the condition of the instrument if the instrument is dirty do not buy it at all if the instrument is dirty it means that it was not stored properly and in uh, auto harps are way more susceptible to poor storage and damage than other instruments because there's a significant amount of tension on the instrument because of all the strings there are moving parts in terms of the chord mechanism and if any of that is not taken care of properly, it's not going to work properly. So what do I mean by that? Let's say that this wasn't stored properly. Someone just put it in their dad's barn for 10 years. That is going to result in rust. It's going to affect the springs that are in the cord mechanism. It's going to affect the felt that are felt on the cord bars. Any improper heat, humidity is going to cause the adhesive on the felt to come off and you will have bits of felt inside the cord mechanism floating around. That means that you're going to have to disassemble the instrument and you're going to have to repair those cord bars 
And if you've never done that before, it's very difficult and frustrating and you won't know what to do. So if the instrument is dirty and it looks rough, do not buy it. Buy an instrument that looks like it is in good condition because if it's clean, that means that it has been taken care of and it most likely was not stored in a barn. If it comes with a case, that's even better because in general, if they're stored in a case, it means that they were probably stored in a better place, they were taken better care of. And it also means that if it comes with a case, you will be able to take it to gigs and keep it safe and travel around with it. And really, this instrument is so perfect for traveling around. It's so ideal because it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's significantly smaller than a guitar, and it just makes it uh, easier to travel with. Let me close this pop-up here. So you do not need to replace the strings often. This is a situation where it's different from other instruments, say for example like the guitar, the banjo, the mandolin. You are constantly making contact with the strings. It is the oils from your fingers, it's the contact you make with the string that causes those strings to wear out. It affects uh, the quality of those strings as your sweat and your oils get into those strings. With an auto harp, you are not making direct contact with the strings themselves, which means that they will last significantly longer. If you keep them out of high humidity, um, they won't um, have the sort of rusting and damage that you will see from instruments that are stored in, in wet environments. So because you use finger picks to play this instrument, um, the strings will last significantly longer. You should really, my advice is really just only replace the strings as they break. There's really no reason to where you'd have to replace all of the strings because these instruments will keep working just fine. You can play finger style if you want, that's quite soft, but if you do that, then you're going to have the same issue in terms of the strings wearing out and losing their sparkle, and then you'll have to replace them more often. If you play them with just your fingers, that's fine if you want a nice soft sound if it, you're sitting up late at night, but you're going to have zero projection and your notes are going to get quite muddy. It's going to make it harder to get a clear uh, sound out of the strings if you're playing just the finger style and it's not it's not going to sound as good as you think it will you can try that and to you because your ear is right there it's going to sound fine but to anyone else if they're sitting more than a couple feet meters away from you they're barely going to hear anything and it's going to be quite muddy so make sure that the instrument is in good condition but don't worry about having to buy strings all the time just replace strings as they go buy an instrument that has all of the strings and if you can see the felt make sure they're in good condition. So I'll sort of show you what good condition looks like. These are basically brand new felt. You can see um, they don't have ruts in them. As you push down on them over time, uh, they'll develop ruts. I'll show you what it looks like when they're worn out. So on my Chroma Harp, the felts are worn out quite a bit. You can see that they're quite, they have ruts in the felt there, you see? So at some point I'm going to have to replace this uh, felt. I'll have to redo the whole thing. So I'm a little bit, um, <clears throat> I don't really have much of a reason to play that anymore, especially since I have to push very hard. Once the felt start wearing out, you have to push harder and harder on the cord bar. If you can see the instrument in person, if you can go to a shop, make sure that all the buttons depress and return without any problems. You can see that they should spring right back up as you push them. If one gets stuck, maybe try and find a different auto harp, because if you are not um, handy with repairing instruments, because this is a mechanical instrument, there are springs in there uh, that push the cord bars back up. If you aren't handy with repairing instrument, I mean handy, not handy. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, if you aren't handy with repairs, then having a stuck uh, cord bar is going to be a big issue. Just make sure that they return to place. In general, you'll, you'll only see them get stuck again if they've been stored improperly or if this thing has been played, you know, like someone with big mixed sausage fingers, you know. So, when you are purchasing an auto harp, sometimes they'll come with tuning keys, sometimes they won't. Very easy to get tuning keys, so don't worry about that. But when you do get your auto harp, make sure that you order a tuning key. In general, they're all going to use the exact same size in terms of the diameter of the bit there for the tuning pegs. So just search online for auto harp uh, tuning key. And in general, they'll do the trick. I always use the T-shaped ones. 
I don't personally like the ones that come off at an angle because you're applying perpendicular torque and force to a peg and you can bend it and damage the instrument. I don't mean bend the peg, but bend it in its position. You can tear up the a hole that it's in. You'll also need finger picks. I strongly recommend uh, using finger picks. You'll find your personal preference. Uh, you'll find many players, um, old, you'll, especially the old time players, will use all metal picks. For me personally, I use two um, plastic picks, especially for your thumb, uh, because I really want to dig in there and get a good strong strike with the thumb pick because I don't play amplified. I play in situations where I'm just acoustic and at that point you'll have to really hit the strings a bit harder, you'll have to strike them a bit harder and if you are using metal you're just going to get a really terrible clattery sound that's just a bit unpleasant. So I use uh, plastic for these to soften that attack and make it more pleasant. I lately have been using metal on the middle finger, so when I reach higher up to play at the higher register, you get a bit more brightness and sparkle to it. So that's it for the important, very most important details. I'll just get into detail um, with a, a bit more advanced stuff. This is just a little bit more in detail now. So there are basically two different kinds of harps. There are chromatic and diatonic. These are chromatic harps. They are suited for accompaniment and playing ensemble, which means they're really just meant to play chords. These instruments are just meant to play chords, but you can play them more expressively. You can um, sort of get across the identity of the melody and the rhythm with these instruments. Um, so as long as the music um, isn't written in such a way to where it's not feasible, you can play melodies on here, but it's significantly harder. Um, but these are ideal for, again, accompaniment. If you want to sing a song and back yourself with some chords and patterns, then you want these chromatic. Both of these are chromatic. If you are joining other musicians like um, guitars and banjos and whatnot, and everything's quite loud, you can bash chords on this and it's fun. These are great for campfires and whatnot. So you can play these quite hard. Diatonic harps are significantly more rare, but they are better suited towards playing melodies. In fact, they're really designed specifically to play in one particular key, uh, but what they do in one key, they do very well. They let you play melodies and whatnot, uh, but you're going to need a bunch of diatonic harps uh, in different keys if you're going to play different songs and if you're going to play with other musicians. You can always transpose songs into a key for a diatonic harp, but that means that you will have a very difficult time uh, playing along with other musicians, especially if you want to jam with a guitarist. Um, and they don't make capos for men like me. I'll just say that. So um, I generally will just stick to these. Uh, this auto harp because it has such a wide selection of chords and I can play along um, with other musicians. So I hope this has been all useful to you. I didn't realize I left that background on there. It's kind of kind of a dull background, isn't it? Uh, let's go ahead and just hide that. So I hope all of this has been useful to you. Um, I mean, that if I didn't have an auto harp, that's one that I would bid on. Um, it starts at fifty dollars. Uh, it's going for six days. So yeah, the, you'll you'll find some good instruments on there. So okay, I hope that was useful to you. This video's run kind of long, I think. So um, yeah, I hope that you're all doing well. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. I'm working on more videos to help people learn auto harp and get started and share my tips with them. Uh, and please keep in mind, again, I'm only one source of information. This is my opinion on um, purchasing an auto harp. So please do not take my word as the one and only. You should never, ever do that. Take my information on board and just understand that this is coming from one person. Uh, seek out more information and uh, collate information from different sources, put them together in a way that makes sense to you. So uh, I hope that you uh, do pick up an auto harp and you have a great time with it. Uh, please take care of yourselves, be well, come home again soon, and I'll keep the porch light on.